uh, the telescopes okay, okay. without telescopes <laughs> we wouldn't have uh, explored right. the universe at right. all to at least to this extent right so uh, what okay. are tele uh, which are the different types of telescopes okay uh, so hmm. let's start at the very beginning hmm. uh, what uh, Galileo used that was the first time somebody used a telescope for hmm. looking at the celestial bodies hmm. those kind of telescopes are called refractive telescopes okay, okay. Hmm. where hmm. the telescopes are built using lenses okay there is a there's a tube hmm. there's a lens hmm. okay hmm. and there is an eyepiece hmm. these are all lenses okay, okay. And uh, what Newton came up with was a reflective telescope okay. and that uses mirrors. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the difference is lens and mirror. Mm -hmm. The advantage, th there are some disadvantages in uh, lens based telescopes mm -hmm. because there is something called, uh, you know, it, the image gets distorted mm -hmm. when the light comes from the edge of the lens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, chromatic mm. aberration or something mm. there is a word for that mm. I don't exactly remember right now but mm. yeah so mm. the lens based telescopes are mm. really not uh, ideal that advanced I yeah. think huh. I mean they are not ideal huh. they, are, they can be used for ground based uh, you know observation like mm. if you are traveling on a mm. ship you are looking at something mm. on the sea mm. so the, those are now being used for uh, such purposes mm. but uh, the telescopes used for uh, astronomical studies are invariably these days mm. uh, mirror reflective. based oh. mirror based reflective. what uh, newton designed is mm. called reflective reflective, reflective telescopes. telescopes okay mm. so the funda is like you have a Hmm. A cylindrical tube, right? Most okay. telescopes are cylindrical tube. Cylindrical. At the bottom, you have a concave mirror. Okay. And the diameter of the mirror hmm. uh, specifies how good is the telescope, how powerful is the telescope, right? Okay. So more the diameter. More the concave. Uh, not the concaveness. Uh, huh. More the diameter of the uh, mirror. Okay. Bigger the diameter of the mirror, it huh. collects more light, oh. right? So that is why it's a better one. So hmm. what happens is, so there's a concave mirror. Hmm. So, in the tube, the light goes inside, hmm. falls on the mirror hmm. and because it is concave, hmm. all the light that is incident on the concave, concave mirror, mirror is reflected back to a point here. Okay. Right? That is the eyepiece. Wait, uh, wait a second. So, hmm. it comes here. Oh. At this point, they have another small mirror, secondary mirror, okay. which will reflect the light 90 degrees oh. again. Okay. And you have an eyepiece here. Oh, got it. Right? <laughs> So that's uh, okay. the way the that is that's the way the periscope is also built. Yeah, right? correct. Periscope here, is, yeah, here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, But yeah, periscope uses prisms, right? Uh, they use prisms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But telescopes. Yeah, uses, telescopes uh, use uh, uh, mirrors. Yeah. Uh. So these are called optical telescopes okay. because hmm. the the data collected is just what your eye can detect. Hmm. It's light, hmm. but hmm. there. Uh, there are other emissions, other electromagnetic radiations that come from the celestial bodies, hmm. right? So, to observe those, hmm. you have what are called radio telescopes. Okay. Okay. Radio telescopes are pretty complicated. Hmm. Uh, they are complex, uh, you know, telescopes. Hmm. So, for example, hmm. if you want to observe hmm. the black holes, hmm. right? Hmm you will have to use a radio telescope. Mm. What they do is they observe mm. the light or the objects which are surrounding the black hole. Mm. Obviously, nothing comes out of the back black hole. You can't really observe anything from the black hole, mm. but they observe the objects which are surrounding it. Surrounding. They, mm. they show a very uh, specific kind of behavior mm. uh, to be able to mm. uh, guess or estimate that there is a black hole at the center okay. because of which the objects so surrounding uh, that area hmm. are, has a specific behavior yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why they come to yeah. know that there is yeah. a black so hole there. they ah. they have special purpose telescopes they are hmm. radio telescopes called hmm. event horizon telescopes okay okay now hmm. if you want to observe a black hole hmm. the size of the telescope hmm. will be humongous it's almost the size of hmm. our earth Okay. You need such a big telescope, but hmm. obviously physically you can't build such big hmm. telescope. Hmm. So what they do is hmm. they place one radio telescope at say North Pole, hmm. one radio telescope at the South Pole hmm. and one in between in like, you know, maybe the along the equator. Hmm. So now hmm. there are three, four different telescopes at various places at hmm. large distances hmm. in radio telescope technology, it is possible to 
Hmm. Look at the data that is collected by all these d- telescopes hmm. and get an image. You have a telescope which is hmm. that big. That big, bigger, yeah, yeah. as big as now. Yeah, that uh-huh. is the advantage of the radio telescope. Okay. okay. So, so it, we have reflective, we have uh, refractive, refractive and also and radio but, telescopes. Yeah, but radio hmm. telescopes and hmm. optical telescopes are different hmm. in the way hmm. they handle the hmm. data that is acquired. Okay. So, optical telescopes can only hmm. collect what hmm. you can see hmm. that is a very narrow band actually in the whole electromagnetic spectrum hmm. what you can see hmm. visible light is hmm. very very narrow hmm. okay so that is what hmm. reflective and refractive telescopes use hmm. whereas radio telescopes hmm. they have a much bigger range hmm. okay and uh, yeah i mean they have specific purpose sir other than uh, these are the basic uh, categories of telescope yeah. other yeah. than that uh, i mean there are different names given to telescope like hubble telescope then oh those the, are just the uh, names like given the hubble names is given, uh, uh, hubble uh, is named after hedwin hubble uh, who was who was uh, an astronomer who hmm. proved hmm. that universe hmm. is expanding in hmm. the 1940s so all telescopes are not earth based you have no okay yeah. that is another category there yes. are earth, so you can categorize telescopes in various different ways okay. one is based on the frequency hmm. which they collect hmm. optical is one and hmm. radio is another one they are hmm. that bifurcation that categorization is based on the frequency of the light they collect hmm. okay hmm. then you have uh, reflective and non refractive hmm. within optical telescopes you have two categories hmm. reflective refractive hmm. one is based on mirror other one is Got based it. on prism okay hmm. uh, based on lens hmm. okay now you have another uh, category, category called earth based and hmm. space based okay <laughs> so that is completely that categorization is based on whether it is on earth or whether it is deployed in the space, space okay uh, and you were talking about those uh, where uh, those telescopes will be placed uh, between uh, some some points oh, called oh, yeah. in the space based in telescopes. the space yes, where yes, are yes. the telescopes based? okay no huh. m- m- most of the telescopes orbit earth at a very short distance hmm. okay for example hmm. hubble hmm. hubble orbits uh, i am not exactly sure what is the uh, hmm. uh, distance at which it orbits it's not more than couple of 100 kilometers okay, okay there is uh, hmm. another telescope and called chandra hubble is between sun and the earth Hubble uh, is very close to Earth. Very close to the Earth. Okay. Earth okay. It yeah. is within like how hmm. your uh, International Space Station goes around Earth, right? Okay. More or less within that, uh, hmm. just slightly above uh, uh, that uh, orbit. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Whereas hmm. there are some telescopes like for example JWST, James hmm. Webb uh, Space Telescope, which hmm. is placed at what is called L1, hmm. Lagrangian point. Hmm. And that point is at a distance of hmm. 1.2 million kilometers hmm. away from sun hmm. Hmm. which means like uh, sun is here earth is here it is behind hmm. earth and it is looking at deep space objects it doesn't okay. look at uh, 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 sun sun okay hmm. so and that so what is what are these lagrangian points okay lagrangian points are uh. Uh, when you have massive celestial bodies hmm. for example sun hmm. and the earth hmm. Both of them have gravitational force, right? They mm. exert gravitational force on every object within mm. their range. Mm. Okay. Mm. At some points mm. within these two objects, there are points where the mm. net gravitational force because of sun and because of earth is nullified, zero. It's zero. Yeah. Mm. So, you, you mathematically, you can calculate that. It's okay. very easy to calculate for mm. two bodies. Okay. okay. For three bodies, when it both becomes, exerts yeah, uh, gravitational yeah, yeah, force, yeah. there is uh, some point where there is no yes, force th- at all. Those are called Lagrangian, Lagrangian points. Lagrangian. Yeah. So ah. the, the the advantage of Lagrangian points is like if you place an object there, for hmm. example, if you put up a telescope there, hmm. you don't have to spend any energy. Hmm. You don't have to burn fuel. Hmm. Uh, it is stationary there. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. So there are a uh, uh, couple of such points hmm. around Earth. So that is where uh, one of the the points is uh, L1 hmm. that is where JWST is uh, placed hmm. and L2 is where ISRO's uh, Aditya is placed. Hmm. Aditya is looking at sun, hmm. it studies sun, hmm. uh, that's why it is placed at L2, L2. and looking at sun. Hmm. And, uh, but JWST is away from JWST the sun. JWST is looking Look. away from the sun. The right. purpose of JWST is to find out exoplanets. Hmm. Uh, and also, uh, like say, some of the galaxies which were formed in the early stages of the formation of the universe. 
okay deep space galaxies hmm. Hmm. Uh, so it is looking at light that is coming from those hmm. galaxies okay yeah so so what are these exoplanets and uh, okay exoplanets huh. or planets hmm. that orbit hmm. other stars okay. like uh, they are outside of our solar system hmm. right but they are still within the milky way we are hmm. not able to look at one star hmm. out of milky way Hmm. If you find anything out of Milky Way, it is only a galaxy. We hmm. cannot differentiate between hmm. uh, the objects within a galaxy outside Milky Way, okay. right? Hmm. So within the Milky Way, we have found. So the first exoplanet was discovered in 1992. Hmm. Okay, there there was a, hmm. uh, a, a mission called Kepler. Kepler. Okay, hmm. so Kepler was a hmm. uh, spacecraft which was launched hmm. to discover exoplanets. Hmm. So the first one was uh, detected unconfirmed. There are two steps to find out an exoplanet. One is you hmm. detect it, hmm. but you have to confirm it by collecting additional data. Hmm. So the first one was detected unconfirmed in 1992, hmm. and that was the first one. And guess what? Until now, we have more than 5,000 exoplanets. Which have been confirmed. discovered. Yeah, yeah, confirmed, oh. discovered, unconfirmed, oh. and on many. And how those, do you identify these exoplanets? There are methods uh, that they use. Okay, yeah. so if there is an exoplanet hmm. orbiting a hmm. sun, hmm. Uh, orbiting a star, orbiting right? another star. Yeah. Huh. So there will be some observable hmm. uh, phenomenon. phenomenon. Like when 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 the planet goes across the. Hmm. Uh, star right hmm. the star might slightly get dimmed dimmed oh. right that is one possible possible right. way right. but there are a couple of other ways hmm. there is something called uh, hmm. uh, lensing uh, hmm. the light might bend hmm. slightly because okay. of the gravitational effect of the uh, planet which is right in front of the star right hmm. so the light coming from the star might slightly bend okay. so that is also one way they uh, you know, they detect. detect yeah, they detect yeah. there are a couple of other. So, ways. how many are there? Five thousand are there. So far, about five thousand. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And are they uh, habitable or? Uh, ha okay. Yeah. So <laughs> they look for what are called biosignatures huh. and biomarkers oh. on these exoplanets. They, there are ways to detect. Hmm. Biosignature is hmm. uh, basically hmm. uh, a sign of hmm. life supporting. Elements, mm. okay. like for example, water. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm. so if they find uh, water or even say oxygen, mm. uh, there are ways to detect mm. uh, these elements mm. sitting here mm. using uh, you know spectroscopy. Mm. So you can uh, expect. Uh, so th those are the bio signatures. Bio -signatures. Okay, and then you look. So if you find bio signatures, then you look for biomarkers. Mm -hmm. Biomarkers are basically uh, the signs of processes that produce. Some of the uh, uh, some of the elements that may be because of life. For example, methane. Okay. For example, carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. So, though if you find those, mm -hmm. those are considered as biomarkers because there's a process behind. Methane doesn't occur naturally, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a an no, organic. There may be a life before, and now there is there is a past life there. Something like that. No, 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 no. no, no. no. See, methane no. is produced if there is life, active life. Okay. Right. Huh. Uh, for example, like uh, Voyager was a mission which was launched in 1974. Hmm. It was going past uh, uh, Saturn hmm. or Uranus. It hmm. turned around and took a picture of Earth. Hmm. Right. Hmm. And Earth there appears as a blue dot, a very small blue dot. Hmm. Now, just like how we look for biosignatures and biomarkers on some exoplanet, using the data that was collected by Viking, you can also look at Earth itself, mm -hmm. knowing what we know about Earth, mm -hmm. so, so, so the on the basis of how Earth originated, mm -hmm. on the same basis we are looking uh, whether there was life in, uh, uh, whether they can be life on other planets also. So Something like the that. expectation is, mm -hmm. we know what is life on Earth, mm -hmm. right? It's a carbon-based life, mm -hmm. and as a result of life on Earth. Hmm. Carbon dioxide is produced hmm. and uh, methane, methane is produced. Hmm. So these are some of the signs of life. life. Hmm. But I mean, it can prove us wrong. I hmm. mean, life may be based on some other, uh, you know, organic uh, process. Who knows, hmm. right? Hmm. It could okay. be. It could be not based on carbon. Something else. Hmm. Hmm. But knowing what we know hmm. about Earth, hmm. astronomers look for something similar.
okay. uh, kind of life. Mm. So they try to mm. uh, detect bio mm. signatures and mm. bio markers. Mm. Uh, and try to look for uh, life on uh, and all this study of extraterrestrial life is what is called uh, uh, astrobiology astrobiology yes is it not yeah, yeah, so yeah. you yeah. have done a dissertation yeah, on uh, yeah. astrobiology yeah. so can you explain more about <laughs> astrobiology what it is and okay so uh, the expectation is hmm. as i said to begin with hmm. there are huge number of hmm. stars hmm. Huge in the sense like 10 to the power of 22 yeah, in the observable true. universe, right? Mm -hmm. And according to a very mm -hmm. uh, reliable estimate, mm -hmm. there are about 5% of those stars which are similar to sun, mm -hmm. right? And within that small percentage, there are about 20% of those stars which have a mm -hmm. habitable zone around uh, the, those stars, okay. right? So that is where my dissertation started. I started with this presumption. Hmm. So, okay, hmm. I mean, the possibility of life hmm. on a certain star and planet combination hmm. is there because hmm. the sheer number, hmm. sun like a star hmm. having an habitable zone, hmm. if you look at the numbers, it hmm. comes to about, you know, 10 to the power of 17 or 18 such possible combinations. Hmm. So, sheer probability wise, Mm. You know, you cannot rule out possibility of life, mm. right? Mm. Then my dissertation also looked at various ways in which mm. uh, life mm. can uh, exist mm. on the mm. exoplanets and uh, detecting mm. life mm. on exoplanets using biomarkers and biosignatures. Mm. And I also explored the possibility of life on some of the moons of our own planets, such oh, as this like is a new Europa thing. and okay. yeah, Europa Io, and yeah, hmm. Io. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So I think in next decade or so, there will be uh, hmm. an exploratory uh, mission sent to one of these moons, hmm. uh, which might you know then find out something. Look, yeah, look for yeah. Uh, yeah. habitation. Yeah. 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 So, other than uh, this, uh, what you say, bio signature, mm. there is something called as techno signatures also. Like maybe there may be advanced uh, human beings. That is, mm. I don't know whether it is there or not. Well, we have yeah, heard I have that. heard about it. Huh. I have heard about it. Huh. If there is a civilization which is as advanced as us, huh. or more and advanced, yeah, than more us advanced also. than us. Mm. And if they are broadcasting, uh, you know, radio signals as mm. we have been doing. Mm. I don't know. I mean, if uh, there's a there's is there a, a possibility. Yeah, there is there is a project called SETI. I don't know if you have heard about hmm. uh, yeah. search for extraterrestrial life. Hmm. Uh, so humans have been looking for such signals coming out of space, hmm. and there were some false identifications also. Also, false we signals. have heard of UFOs also. UFOs the, are. The, I'm not are, sure. It's. I think. Uh, 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 I mean, UFO sightings have been mostly in the southern part of US mm. where, mm. I know... It may all be yeah. some... Uh, I, it may not be truth. Though. It may not be. Ah. At least so far, nothing has come out ah. of it. Ah. Uh, mm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. can't rule out, but there is no evidence as Sir, of now. Sir, because of the universe and the various celestial objects, are there any dangers to the earth? Like sometime uh, when I was a small child, uh, we had heard about Halley's Comet coming in. Mm. Uh, about Halley's Comet. We were also scared yeah. that the Halley's Comet would come and uh, really crash on earth and no, uh, all I mean, that. The, uh, the are there orbit, something like that? The uh. orbit of the comets are well understood. Hmm. There is very little chance that mm. a comet would uh, be in the path of earth. Mm. Mm. But asteroids, yes. Some of the asteroids mm. which are in between Mars and Jupiter, mm. there are some stray asteroids. We don't know the paths of all the asteroids. Mm. So, there is a possibility mm. that there could be an asteroid which mm. crosses path with earth. Mm. It has happened before. Mm. That is how the dinosaurs were wiped out 65 million years ago. Okay. So, so there may you be can't chances where uh, human race also can be wiped out because yeah, of, there is, you never there know. Is a, you 
and uh, there is yeah. also something called but, uh, as, uh, these, these days, meteor uh, rains and uh, uh, yeah meteor rain, rain i mean those are not harmful anyway i mean like uh, mm. if the object that hits the earth is size i mean mm. a bigger uh, object then mm. uh, there could be mm. you know catastrophic uh, you know effect yeah, of, effect, but i think meteors are yeah, not harmful yeah, yeah, no, not yeah, unless they, they are, form only craters i think small uh, uh, well it depends on the size size of the what planet. happens is when they enter the earth's atmosphere they break up into smaller fragments mm. and they hit the earth and they are the one called shooting stars yeah, uh, yeah. meteors yeah, uh, meteor which uh, come in yeah, yeah. yeah. Sir, uh, when I come to uh, this uh, path breaking uh, projects of missions, astronomy yeah. or missions yeah. of uh, mm -hmm. astronomy, mm. uh, what would you like to say about that, sir? Okay. Huh. So, I guess the most important uh, human uh, projects that uh, I can talk about mm. Voyager 1, Voyager 2, mm. uh, they were launched in 1974 or 75. Mm. Uh, and now they have crossed Pluto, they have gone beyond our solar system and mm. they are in what is called the interstellar space. Mm. But believe it or not, they are still sending data mm -hmm. to Earth. It takes about, uh, uh, I guess, 20 hours or 30 hours for mm. the data to reach us mm. because they, they are so far mm. away from us. Mm. Uh, the data that they send, mm. which comes at the speed of light, mm. it still takes about, mm. you know, 20 hours or 25 hours to reach us. Mm. For example, the, the sunlight that comes from the sun to mm. earth, it takes 8 minutes. Okay. Okay. Now you can guess how far are Voyager, uh, Voyager 1, 1 and Voyager 2 mm. from us. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, mm. to give you an approximation of how far they are, if you consider the distance of the earth from sun as one unit, one astronomical unit, they are at a distance of about 125 astronomical units from us, okay. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Oh. And they have done some real good discoveries on the way. Mm. Uh, they have taken pictures of Jupiter, they have mm. taken pictures of Saturn, mm. and uh, they flew by uh, some of the moons of uh, Saturn. Mm. And uh, we know so much about our own solar system because of Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Mm. Uh, it is pretty amazing. And one more thing, Voyager mm. 1 and Voyager 2 mm. have mm. Um, what is called, uh, you know, metal mm. posters. I don't know what exactly they are called. Mm. Metal posters wherein mm. they have inscribed messages in different languages of the world. Okay. Just in case if some civilization discovers these objects just to tell them that we are here mm -hmm. and there are recordings of music for mm. example i think there is a recording of uh, pandit ravi shankar sitar music on it really really yeah oh yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. great yeah, yeah. Oh. and uh, there are recordings of uh, hello in various mm. different languages okay including some of the indian languages mm -hmm. uh, i think the man behind it was carl sigan the mm. astronomer astrophysicist famous hmm. who did a whole lot for popularizing astronomy astrophysics yeah. so he was one of the most uh, hmm. you know prominent uh, person who person of those times hmm. who did a lot for popularizing uh, hmm. astro astronomy and astrophysics hmm. he and, was and a man behind voyager one and two well he was one hmm. of the man behind hmm. and especially he was in charge of putting what should go on on that metal plate where mm. the messages are recorded. Mm. And other than Voyager 1 and 2, yeah. I, uh, about uh, JWST. Yeah, JWST is yeah. a recent one. It is a telescope. Mm. It is a 6 meter primary mirror telescope. The mm. primary mirror is completely a gold plated Mm. Uh, elements, mm. they, they consist of number of I think 36 elements. Okay. The mirror is not one full, one mm. single mirror. It consists of 36 elements okay. of hexagonal shape. Uh -huh. So, they are all, they're all put together. Okay. And, and all, how big is that mirror? The, the mirror is 6 meters in six diameter. Meters in 6 diameter. meters in diameter. Mm. Yeah. You can also mention uh, two projects, uh, New Horizon and uh, spacecraft Cassini. 
Cassini did some uh, you know path breaking uh, exploration mm. so we know a whole lot about Pluto because mm. of mm. Uh, New Horizon and Cassini mm. and those are also mm. uh, the projects which have thrown a lot of light on uh, you know our understanding of uh, Pluto. Pluto. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Sir, uh, uh, actually, when we were in, uh, when we were children, you know, we used to learn in solar system there are nine planets. <laughs> now Pluto, they have excluded yeah. and it's become a, da- a yeah. dwarf planet. Dwarf I think. planet. Yeah. And uh, well, what, uh, the the reason. And why is it uh, remote? The why reason is, is called a dwarf Pluto. Planet? Pluto is hmm. an oddity. Hmm. It is. An oddity because hmm. uh, generally, hmm. as you move away from the sun, hmm. the planets are gaseous. Hmm. The planets nearest hmm. to the sun hmm. are solid, hmm. like earth like, I mean, they hmm. have a proper surface. Hmm. Uh, whereas, if you go beyond Mars, hmm. Jupiter, Saturn, they're hmm. all gaseous planets, right? Hmm. And that is not so with Pluto. Pluto hmm. is an exception. So, that hmm. is uh, the reason for that is probably Pluto is an acquired. It's not a planet anymore. It's okay. an acquired hmm. uh, object into okay. the solar system, and okay. its uh, its orbit is so wonked hmm. that sometimes it is closer to us than hmm. uh, Neptune. Okay. And sometimes it is further away. So it is not a stable orbit. It's hmm. like very wonked orbit that it goes hmm. around the sun. Hmm. And uh, but all other planets follow uh, uh, definite uh, orbit. Y- you know? Yes. Huh. Yes. Uh, hmm. They all but go all in anti-clockwise go. direction. If hmm. you look from the top, hmm. all the planets go in hmm. the anti-clockwise direction. Hmm. Not only that, even from west to east. That's what we say. Huh. Uh, let me put it this way: If you hmm. look at from the north pole, huh. like top, hmm. so all the planets. Orbit the sun in hmm. the anticlockwise direction. Anticlockwise. Right. Hmm. Right. Okay. And they also spin hmm. in the anticlockwise, di- anticlockwise direction. All except, have this rotation. Except for Venus. Is. Venus is the only planet which hmm. spins on its axis in the clockwise direction. Okay. And also, I think uh, Uranus. Uranus has a very different kind of uh, axis on which it spins. It is the. It's not vertical. It is hmm. horizontal. Hmm. Hmm. I believe it is Uranus. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it. Sir, uh, my last question to you: uh, Like, uh, if you, if somebody wants uh, to pursue as an uh, uh, amateur uh, astronomer, yeah. so what are the uh, resources that you recommend for them, or what kind of a telescope should they buy, and what communities should they get involved in, what books should they read? Okay. So, there are a couple of options. If you are in Bangalore, you can visit uh, the planetarium, mm. uh, the planetarium uh, that Bangalore has, uh, is called Nehru Planetarium. Mm. And you can also visit uh, Birla Institute of Fundamental Research, where mm. they do some uh, mm. real good work mm. on astronomy and astrophysics, and also they conduct classes mm. uh, for all levels. Mm. Uh, you even if you are just a beginner, there are classes that they conduct which can uh, be pretty useful. Mm. And uh, there is Bangalore Astronomical Society, mm. uh, which is an organization. Uh, you mm. can uh, just uh, visit their website, mm. and they conduct some uh, you know observational events like mm. you know on a, a dark night they take you out of the city and show you some of the objects, mm. how to identify them. Mm. And there are a lot of resources on the net. Uh, mm. I would like to recommend uh, University of Nebraska. Mm. Uh, they have simulations which are so good, mm. uh, astronomical simulations. Mm. Uh, they are pretty useful. I can probably give you the link mm. uh, to all those uh, uh, resources. Okay. And I also recommend uh, a tool that mm. you can uh, install on your laptop called Stellarium. Mm which will uh, simulate the night sky for you Hmm. uh, on your laptop Hmm. and you can uh, do a whole lot of things like you can uh, you know simulate uh, time like Hmm. if you want to go forward like say 100 years from now Hmm. uh, you can do that and Mm -hmm. see the sky 
uh, how it looks like uh, oh. say after 100 years huh. or you say if you want to go very fast like you know mm-hmm. uh, you can scroll very very fast and mm. uh, uh, and similarly you can also go back mm. and you can identify objects you can mm. search for objects mm. uh, it's a wonderful tool and it's free Uh, stellarium you can download stellarium and, uh, stellarium mm. Mm. that's a that's wonderful tool. yeah mm. yeah uh, so uh, what kind of a telescope should be by oh, there is some see. caliber or something okay so huh? obviously you will go for a mm. uh, mirror based mm. reflective telescope mm. uh, if you want to observe uh, some of the objects mm. and what defines how good is the telescope is the primary mirror Hmm. for amateurs you can go for either a 10 inch mirror hmm. primary mirror or an 8 inch primary mirror hmm. and again when you want to buy a telescope the question is whether you want to buy a telescope hmm. uh, which is called motorized you know hmm. um, motorized telescopes are very useful because uh, you don't have to move the tel- all the objects are moving in the sky right hmm. they're not stationary hmm. so as the the object moves across the sky then you have you to move the, move the telescope you yes. have to gently tilt the telescope Correct. and that you have to do manually if the telescope is not motorized mm-hmm. whereas if you buy a motorized telescope then you don't have to worry about mm-hmm. otherwise uh, it's uh, pretty painful on your back when you bend down and move the telescope keep observing it uh, it's a painful thing roughly if what will be the cost of a telescope uh, So a 10 inch mirror one would cost you about 60,000 60 to 70,000 mm. and that is a non motorized one if mm. uh, you want to buy a motorized one maybe another 10 15k more mm-hmm. uh, that's it mm. and uh, so using 10 inch mm. or 8 inch uh, mm. mirror based mm. telescopes mm. you can easily mm. observe all the planets mm. you can uh, mm. see jupiter you can see saturn you can see mars Uh, venus venus of course yeah venus, venus you can you eye yeah eye venus eye. is one of the brightest <laughs> object in the sky you can uh, see uh, uh, venus that's one of the brightest object in the brightest sky you object, can uh. you cannot miss and it and also yeah. constellations also you can uh, i think identify which are the uh, constellations that we can identify well you can identify uh, orion constellation orion. Huh. and taurus hmm. what is the seven fathers what they say that is i am not sure about that <laughs> uh, uh, okay. but yeah i mean like some of the uh, you know very popular constellations are orion orion and mm. taurus and uh, what what are the books that you suggest so oh, there are lots of there's lot of information on the web ah. and the internet like ah. you just internet do a google search yeah yeah and you, you can also do some courses on coursera that's what Co- of course that. yeah ah. coursera there are lots ah. of courses that you can ah. take i have ah. i have taken two courses hmm. uh very useful one mm. was conducted by a professor from uh, university of arizona mm. and other one was conducted by duke mm. uh, very good excellent mm. and uh, mm. yeah i mean there's plenty of resource on the net mm. you can really find mm. uh, answers to answers mm. to most of your questions on the net Yeah. Thank you Manjana. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure <laughs> talking the, to you. Yeah, yeah, pleasure talking to you. Yeah. The amount of information that you have given, the knowledge that you have given, I think really the, our audiences will love to hear it. And I want to bring it in two parts because <laughs> there is a lot of thing. I think people will get excited and they want to start a career sure. and at least as an amateur. I mean if they are interested, yeah. if mm. I can somehow mm. Uh, mm. like kindle their interest i think that's enough actually like yeah yeah curiosity is all you know yes yeah. and uh, that you have done really thank you. wonderful thank you very much. and uh, it was so exciting <laughs> conversation i can say thank you so Thanks much manjana yeah. for all the insights and experiences sure, yeah. that you have yeah, shared yeah. with us today uh, and uh, spark igniting minds will is thank is thankful to you heartfelt thank thanks you. thank you okay